BestBookBits.com presents the new Primal Blueprint by Mark Sisson. The new Primal Blueprint serves as the ultimate roadmap for anyone wishing to make the shift from forward conventional wisdom about diet and exercise to a healthy, happy, empowering lifestyle patterned after the evolutionary tested behaviors of our hunter-gatherer ancestors. The book details the 10 immutable Primal Blueprint lifestyle laws that enable and empower you to reprogram your genes to direct in the direction of weight loss, health, and and longevity. The Primal Blueprint laws are validated by 2 million years of human evolution, as well as an ever-expanding body of contemporary scientific research. Sisson's philosophy was originally met with skepticism as he aggressively challenged numerous mainstream health tenets. Eight years later, mainstream medical and health science are validating the Primal Blueprint tenets' assertions that a high-carb, grain-based diet will make you fat, tired, and sick that a consistent routine of medium to difficult cardiovascular workouts can actually compromise your health and longevity and increase risk of heart disease, and that consuming whole food sources of fat and cholesterol does not lead to heart disease as we've been led to believe, but rather offers many health benefits. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of The New Primal Blueprint. The doctor of the future will give no medicine, but instead will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and the cause and prevention of disease. The medical and fitness community is now sounding a familiar theme to ours. It looks like we were wrong about eating fat and a bunch of other flawed and outdated conventional wisdom. Who knew? The primal slash paleo slash ancestral health community now boasts hundreds of books, videos, workshops, retreats, podcasts, and blogs about the ancestral lifestyle. The time has come to ditch once and for all all of the health advice dispensed by gimmicky best-selling diet books and return to the scientific evidence about how a species not only survived against the odds, but thrived. The primal blueprint laws are as old as the dawn of mankind. Following the conventional wisdom of our time, weight loss efforts doomed us to a 96% long-term failure rate. Striving for perfection with the 80% rule. It means that you can be successful without being overly strict or regimented about your diet and exercise. Orthorexia, an eating disorder characterized by an extreme preoccupation with avoiding unhealthy foods. Perfection is impossible. Perfection is impossible. However, striving for perfection is not. Do the best you can under the conditions that exist. That is what counts. We must discover our own optimal eating habits within the framework of the evolutionary health principles. We must take allowances for enjoyment of modern life as well as individual preferences and sensitivities. Regarding the ancestral dietary debate, a few things are indisputable. First, it is clear what our ancestors didn't eat. Hint, no processed sugars, industrial oils, or refined or even whole grains. They ate plants and animals. Evidence bears out that they ate. Horror of horrors, a high fat, low carb profile, especially comparison to the standard American diet, which is another word, acronym for SAD. Weight loss does not have to involve the suffering, sacrifice, and deprivation we've been conditioned to accept. The idea is that you can reprogram your genes through behavior is the central premise of the book, reprogram your genes through your behavior. Become a fat burning beast by eliminating processed carbohydrates from your diet to minimize insulin production. This means ditching not only sugars and sweetened beverages, but also grain products including wheat, rice, pasta, cereals, and corn. A diet that emphasizes meat, fish, fowl, eggs, nuts, seeds, and colorful natural carbs from vegetables and fruits is the primary way to improve your general health, control your weight, and minimize the risk of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, arthritis, and other diet-influenced medical conditions. You do not have to struggle and suffer with calorie restriction and exhausting exercise to shed excess body fat. You simply have to reset your appetite and metabolic hormones that have been dysregulated by a lifetime of wildly excessive insulin production. The biological mechanisms that work synchronistically to maintain a state of homeostasis within each of us are imperative to our survival. Thanks to the hectic pace of our high-tech modern world, many of us struggle to maintain our health. Experience has taught us how difficult, if not impossible, it is to be lean, fit, energetic, and healthy by following conventional wisdom. 
70% of today's healthcare expenditures are for lifestyle-related chronic disease such as obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Eating processed foods, exercising excessively, or conversely, being inactive and making other poor lifestyle decisions undermines your genetic mandate for health. A huge percentage of all doctor visits today are a direct consequence of lifestyle choices that are misaligned with the environmental and survival conditions that shaped our primal genetic makeup. While 21st century longevity stats are vastly superior to those of any other time in human history, these increases are largely attributed to science, not healthy lifestyle behaviors. Furthermore, modern longevity is often undesirable, inflated by scientific advancements that keeps us alive but not improve our quality of life. Hospital machinery, pharmaceuticals, and the ability to reel in the years doing little more than putting spoon to mouth and thumb to remote control. Chapter 1, The 10 Primal Blueprint Laws The re-evolutionary premise that we should model our diet, exercise, and lifestyle behaviors after our primal ancestors from 10,000 years ago, adopting these behaviors strategically to the realities of high-tech modern life. Genes are the traffic cops that direct the function of every cell in your body at all times. Genes are activated or deactivated by the signals they receive from the environment. Our primal ancestors were likely stronger and healthier than we are today. Today's technological age is populated with the fattest, most sedentary humans in history of humanity. Genes are not self-determining. They do not turn on or off by themselves, but rather they respond to signals they receive from their immediate environment. Genes actively control cell function all the time. We have immense power to turn some genes on and off to generate optimal results. There are multiple possible versions of the future you. It's up to you to decide which version you will become. It's up to you to make lifestyle choices that direct genes towards fat burning, muscle building, longevity and wellness, and away from fat storing, muscle wasting, disease and illness. Law one, eat plants and animals. Enjoy the nutritious, satisfying foods that fueled 2.5 million years of human evolution. Law number two, avoid poisonous things. Ditch processed modern foods laden with sugars, grains, even whole grains, and refined vegetable oils, partially hydrogenated trans fats, high polyunsaturated vegetable oils, and the new intrasterified fats. These foods are foreign to our genes and make us fat, inflamed, tired, and sick. Law 3. Move frequently. Improve general health, cognitive function, and fat metabolism by moving more in everyday life and conducting aerobic workouts at very comfortable heart rates. Law 4. Lift heavy things. Brief intense sessions of functional full body movements support muscle development and delay aging. Law 5. Sprint once in a while. Occasional all-out sprints trigger optimal gene expression and beneficial hormone flow for a potent anti-aging effect. Law 6. Get plenty of sleep. Avoid excessive artificial light and digital stimulation after dark to align your circadian rhythm with the sun and enjoy optimal immune, brain, and endocrine function. Law 7. Play. Balance the stress of modern life with some unstructured physical fun. Both brief breaks and grand outings are essential to mental and physical well-being and maintenance of a cognitively fluid mind. Law number 8. Get plenty of sunlight. Don't fear the sun, expose large skin surface areas to sun during peak times to manufacture and store enough vitamin D to ensure healthy cell function and cancer protection. Law number nine, avoid stupid mistakes. Cultivate your innate abilities to be vigilant for dangers and to manage risk expertly in order to avoid the stupid mistakes that bring avoidable suffering to modern humans. Law number 10, use your brain. Engage in creative and stimulating intellectual pursuits away from your core daily economic responsibilities to nurture your mental health and overall well-being. The secret is to do right thing, choose behaviors that promote desirable gene expression and avoid those that promote negative outcomes. Chapter two, Grok and Krog from indigenous to digital. The idea of the medical horizon is that chronic inflammation is the root cause of degenerative disease. If physicians are trained to use food as medicine, they may not need to rely on drugs and their distressing side effects to treat the inflammatory process. Well-intended efforts to do the right are continually sabotaged by cultural norms and misguided conventional wisdom. 
we are conditioned by the powerful forces of consumerism to pursue forward solutions to our problems and ailments. Modern life is so out of balance that extreme measures are necessary just to maintain some semblance of health. Chapter 3, The Primal Blueprint Eating Philosophy Modern insulin production and improving insulin sensitivity by eliminating the intake of processed carbohydrates, which means not only sugars, but also cultivated grains. Consuming fewer processed carbohydrates results in less insulin production, thus causing your hunger and cravings to moderate. Remember the crash and burn effect is due to your body constantly cycling back and forth from consuming carbohydrates, burning it as glucose, then kicking out insulin to moderate blood glucose, which results in you feeling lethargic, hungry, and looking for a quick fix. 80% of your body composition is determined by how you eat. 80% of your body composition is determined by how you eat. We know now that the outdated and unwarranted recommendations to eat 300 or more grams of mostly grain-based carbohydrates each day has contributed greatly to the destruction of the human health. It's not unusual for the average American and people in other countries following a Western-style diet to consume 500 to 600 grams of insulin-generating, fat-promoting carbohydrates daily. Furthermore, a large proportion of these carbohydrates are likely refined, meaning that they have been processed in some way that increases the severity of glucose spike and requisite insulin response. White flour and high fructose corn syrup are the two prominent examples of refined carbohydrates that are rampant in the standard American diet. They have no real nutritional value and can promote inflammation and oxidative damage when they are consumed regularly. 80% of your ability to reduce excess body fat is determined by how you eat, with the other 20% depending on proper exercise, other health lifestyle habits, and genetic factors. It's as simple as this. If you have excess body fat, it's directly relative to the amount of insulin you produce from your diet combined with your familial genetic predisposition to store fat. Your ability to reduce excess body fat and maintain a desirable body composition is directly related to your ability to moderate insulin production with healthy dietary habits to reduce inflammation, a contributor to insulin resistance, and to a lesser extent, follow a sensible exercise program that combines extensive low-level cardio, frequent brief intense strength training sessions, and occasional all-out sprints. You can alter your biochemistry at each meal. You can alter your biochemistry at each meal to stimulate a fat-burning metabolism and maintain consistent energy levels or to do the opposite with poor food choices. The typical modern diet is basically made up of one glucose bomb after another in the form of breads, pastas, cereals, pastries, sweets, and even supposedly healthy foods like smoothies, trail mix, and meal replacement bars, many of which contain tons of added sugar, milk, chocolate, processed corn products, and so on. Bombing their system in this way has many Americans on a glucose insulin roller coaster that results in the short term in glucose spikes and crashes, increased insulin production, cravings, irritability, and weight gain, and in the long term, chronic disease. Sadly, a grain and sugar heavy diet coupled with chronic inactivity has put many people on the path to insulin resistance instead of insulin sensitivity. The human body is simply not designed to process the amount of glucose most people dump into it day after day. Insulin resistant, inactive, no demand, high carb intake, no storage space available. What happens is you have soda, refined carbs. It goes to the fat storage in the liver, fatty liver. Fat released by the liver into the bloodstream, high triglycerides, equals fat storage, weight gain, inflammation, worsening insulin resistance and fatigue. Looking at insulin sensitivity, you have nutritious carbs. It goes to space available in the muscle cells and room to store glycogen, no fat production. Carbs are treated differently in the body depending on whether they're insulin resistant, insufficient exercise and movement, dietary energy excess, surplus of processed carbohydrates, or insulin sensitive, regular exercise, active lifestyle, healthy weight, moderated carb intake. Insulin resistance can be addressed quickly by reducing carbohydrate intake and increasing activity levels. Your goal should be to maintain stable, healthy insulin levels through sensible 
diet and exercise choices. This does not mean cutting out all carbohydrates out of your diet, but rather preferentially eating reasonable amounts of carbohydrates from vegetables and fruits that produce a much more moderate insulin response than that caused by grains or sugars. What causes heart disease? It's oxidation and inflammation driven primarily by poor food choices, excessive insulin production, and all forms of stress in excess, including over-exercising. You can't survive or thrive without cholesterol, which is why your liver actually makes up 1,400 milligrams a day, regardless of how much foodborne cholesterol you consume, or how much you avoid it like the plague in your diet. Excessive insulin production drives the conversion of ingested carbohydrate into fat triglycerides. Excessive insulin production drives the conversion of ingested carbohydrate into fat triglycerides. Heart disease prevention tips. Ditch industrial oils. Exercise primal blueprint style. Increase antioxidant intake. Reduce carb intake, especially refined carbs. Eat healthy fat to help prevent cancer and heart disease. Avoid fat and increase your risk of cancer, heart disease, and even obesity. Half the brain consists of fat. High carbohydrate intake increases your risk of cancer, heart disease, and obesity. Cutting carbs and increasing intake of healthy fat lowers your disease risk and helps you maintain healthy body composition. I have a non-scientific name for treating lifestyle-related health problems with pharmaceuticals. Dig in a hole to install a ladder to wash the basement windows. The Primal Blueprint Eating Style, with its emphasis on nutritious, inflammation-reducing foods and its aversion to processed pro-inflammatory foods, will help you naturally avoid the systematic inflammation that is now believed to be the root cause of the major health problems affecting modern humans. Give yourself permission to eat as much as you want, whenever you want, for the rest of your life. Take notice of the point that in every meal where you have attained satisfaction and feel comfortable stopping not the point at which you are stuffed full and need to take your belt out a notch, but the point at which you are no longer hungry for the next bite, knowing that you can eat again whenever you like. Eating on Grok's Clock While those immersed in the carbohydrate dependency from the sad eating patterns will become hungry and irritable when missing even a single meal, you can free yourself from dependency on regular meals when you become fat adapted through a sustained period of primal aligned eating. Our ancestors ate sporadically, with continually varied meal times and food choices, give seasonal variables and hunting success or failure. They didn't always have enough food of or a varied diet. Our genes thrive on the intermittent scarcity and can even handle occasional excess. In fact, they expect it. Skipping meals, fasting briefly, and simply freeing yourself from an obsessive need to eat three square meals or six small meals a day when the clock strikes a particular hour, will most definitely benefit your body by improving your ability to tap into stored fat for energy, optimizing cellular repair, moderating your appetite, and enhancing your appreciation for the meals you eat when you're actually a little or a lot hungry. Your need to consume calories on a regular schedule will diminish substantially when blood glucose levels are moderated and you start burning fat and ketones more effectively through low insulin primal blueprint dietary choices. You experience more consistent energy levels and a comfortably diminished appetite. You'll become a fat-burning beast. Pay attention to your hunger levels, then to the clock. Skipping breakfast and eating in a compressed time window of around noon to 7 p.m. each day. Big ass omelette, three eggs, cheese, chopped mushrooms, peppers, onions, and tomatoes, and topped with some bacon and avocado. Or a big ass salad with assorted fresh veggies, nuts, and steak, chicken, or tuna. If you adopt an extremely disciplined approach in the first 21 days to ditch sugars, grains, and bad oils, you will build momentum towards fat adaption. This will make it much easier over the long term to avoid the backsliding that is so common among dieters. Grains and sugars are confirmed to have significant addictive properties, so when you cut them out, you begin to lose your cravings for them. Pay close attention to your hunger levels and eliminate emotional triggers that lead to unhealthy eating. Eat because you are hungry, not because you are bored, tired, or stressed. Stop eating when you are no longer hungry, rather when you feel full, because by then, you've likely overeaten. Chapter 4. Understanding Macronutrients The concept of calories in, calories out fails to account for how 
different foods influence your appetite and metabolic hormones. The body can store fuel and act as a toxic waste site, and it has the capacity to generate its own energy, depending largely on the hormonal signals it gets from your behaviors. Since your body always seeks to achieve homeostasis, balance, the notion of you trying to zero in on a precise day-to-day meal-to-meal eating plan is generally fruitless, not to mention incredibly frustrating and demotivating. Your body does a great job of adjusting to variations in caloric intake and energy expenditure through an assortment of hormonal and genetic processes that will always supersede your diligent efforts to calculate food and exercise calories. Protein. Protein is essential for building and repairing body tissues and for overall healthy function. A pattern of excess protein intake accelerated aging and increases cancer risk. When you eat more protein than your body needs, you either make sugar out of it or produce nitrogen waste products that stress the kidneys charged with excreting the excess. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrate controls insulin. Insulin controls fat storage. Humans survive for 2.5 million years on extremely minimal carbohydrate intake until we're suddenly bombarded with massive amounts of carbs with the advent of civilization. All forms of carbohydrates you eat, whether simple or complex, are rapidly converted into glucose upon ingestion. It's insulin's job to take glucose out of the bloodstream and put it somewhere fast. In most healthy people, glucose is not burned immediately, will be first stored as glycogen in muscle and liver cells. When these signs are full, glucose is converted into dry glycerides and stored in fat cells. Carbohydrates are not required in the fats and proteins are. The body has several backup mechanisms for generating glucose internally, from dietary fat and protein, as well as a form of gluconeogenesis, using either ingested protein or stripping down lean muscle tissue. Researchers have estimated that the body manufactures up to 200 grams of glucose every day from the fat and protein in our diet or in our muscles. There is no biological requirement for dietary carbohydrate in a human diet. There is no biological requirement for dietary carbohydrate in the human diet. The primal blueprint is an eliminate bad carbs diet. If you're trying to lose excess body fat, the most direct path is to moderate carb intake. There is no call for anyone to consume grains, sugars, sweetened beverages, or other highly processed, high-carb fare ever. The carbohydrate curve, what will be the sweet spot or the death spiral? Looking at the graph, you can see on the left, we've got grams of carbs per day. Do we see down the bottom to be from 0 to 50 grams per day, you're in the keto zone. From 50 to 100 grams per day, you're in a weight loss sweet spot, and then 150 to 100, you're in effortless weight maintenance. Most people sit around 150 to 300, which is the insidious weight gain. Anything above 300 grams of carbs per day puts you in the danger zone, which leads to stored more fat and obesity and illness. For most people, carb intake is a major factor in weight loss, success, or failure. And excessive refined carb consumption is arguably the most destructive modern lifestyle behavior. Eliminating grains and sugars from your diet could be the most beneficial thing you ever do for your health. 0 to 50 grams per day, ketosis and accelerated fat burning. 50 to 100 grams per day, primal sweet spot for effortless weight loss. 100 to 150 grams per day, primal blueprint maintenance range. 150 to 300 grams per day, steady, insidious weight gain. And 300 or more grams per day, danger zone. Your health and likely your lifespan will be determined by the proportion of fat versus sugar you burn over a lifetime. Fat. Consuming healthy fats from animal and plant sources supports optimal function of all the systems in your body. Ingesting fat helps you feel full and satisfied in a way that ingesting carbohydrates, generally speaking, cannot. Consuming certain dangerous fats is, from a health perspective, one of the most objectionable behaviors in modern life, but other fats are extremely healthy and nutritious. Processed junk foods are laden with practically hydrogenated trans fats, franken fats, created by adding hydrogen to liquid oils to make them more solid. Solidifying fats in this manner effectively extends shelf life. Carbs makes fat look bad. Fat is calorie dense at 9 calories per gram. If you consume excess carbs, 150 to 300 grams or more per day, produce a high level of insulin and eat an appropriate amount of fat along with a high carb diet, your fat intake will contribute directly 
to making you fat. Excessive carbs raise insulin levels, which steer both carbs and fat and even excess protein via gluconeogenesis into your fat cells, making high amounts of carbs and fat together more problematic than either macronutrient on its own. It's unsettling how much decision-making power is controlled by corporations that spend billions of marketing dollars molding and shaping conventional dietary wisdom in the direction of profits with little regard for health. In the story of how saturated fat came to be vilified, American scientist Ansel Keys is a central character. Key was an eloquent and dynamic early promoter of the link between saturated fat intake, cholesterol levels, and heart disease. Keyes achieved notoriety in the 1960s with for his efforts to transition the public away from saturated fats to replacements such as polyunsaturated oils or low-fat eating in general, as well as his remarkably successful use of the American Heart Association to cement his theories into public policy. It has taken decades at a dwindling pace to recognize the folly of his health suggestions. The wonderful world of ketones. Ketones are produced in the liver as a byproduct of fat metabolism when blood glucose and insulin levels are very low. Your body evolved to utilize ketones in the same manner as glucose, a key survival component throughout human evolution. Ketone burning helped keep grok alive during short periods of starvation or longer periods when meat, Protein and fats was plentiful, but plants, carbs were not. Ketones are safe, desirable, energy-efficient forms of fuel. They are quite literally the fourth macronutrient fuel source, but they come from inside your body instead of from your plate. When your body becomes efficient at using fat and ketones for energy, you are said to be fat and keto adapted. Ketones are internally manufactured energy sources that the body burns in the same manner as glucose, except more cleanly. Intermittent macronutrient changes are more in line with our evolutionary past than any permanent dietary state. As long as you are eating primal line foods, you will be able to naturally maintain your ideal body composition and mitigate your risk of diet-related health conditions and diseases. Chapter 5, Primal Blueprint Law Number 1, Eat Plants and Animals. The high cost of buying local, organic plant and animal products pales in comparison to the healthcare cost of a long-term conditions like type 2 diabetes that are strongly influenced by poor dietary habits. If we're not supposed to eat animals, how come they're made of meat? Primal Blueprint Food Pyramid For effortless weight loss, vibrant health and maximum longevity, nutritious, satisfying, high nutrient value, low insulin, stimulating foods, low carbohydrate, moderate protein, ample nutritious fats, Flexible choices and meal habits by personal preference, free of grains, sugars, and refined vegetable oils. Looking at our food pyramid, starting down the bottom, we have vegetables. Abundant and varied intake for maximum nutrition, antioxidant values. You want them to be colorful, locally grown, and or organic. Then we have meat, fish, fowl, and eggs. You want them to be emphasized on local, pastured, raised, or certified organic. Then we have healthy fats, things like avocados, coconut products, nuts, seeds, and their butters, olives, extra virgin olive oil. Um, you want to use cooking, which is animal fats, avocado oil, butter, and coconut oil. Then we go to moderate foods. Nutritious carbs like sweet potatoes, squash, quinoa, wild rice, a little bit of dark chocolate, anything above 75% cacao, things like fruits and high-fat dairy, full cream milk, yogurt, and aged cheese. Then up the top, we have a small amount of high herbs, spices, extracts, which are high antioxidant nutritional value. Then some supplements, multivitamins, omega-3, prebiotics, probiotics, and protein meal powder, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2. Perhaps the most fundamental element of the evolutionary health movement is the simple assertion that humans have evolved into omnivorous creatures adapted to consume a variety of plants, vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, and their butters, and herbs and spices. Animals, meat, fish, fowl, eggs, and even insects, and are wholly unequipped to consume the refined sugars, grains, and industrial oils that compromise a huge proportion of our modern diet. Animal foods are healthy and nutritious and will help you reduce excess body fat, build lean muscle, and generally obtain peak performance. No culture or society has ever su survived for an extended period of time on a meatless diet. Remarkably, about 500 calories a day are required just to fuel the human brain. 
Animals, meat, fish, fowl and eggs and plants, vegetables, fruits, nuts and seeds, and herbs and spices should represent nearly the entire composition of your diet. Fish. Salmon are often fed artificial diets to help their flesh match the deep pink color of the wild varieties of salmon. If you're dining out even at a nice place, it's probably farmed Atlantic. Atlantic is the species, not the location where it was caught. Many farm fish, especially the prevalent Atlantic salmon, should be avoided because they are raised in unsanitary, waste-infested waters and have dangerous chemical additives in their diets. Eggs. In a 2008 study published in the International Journal of Obesity, suggesting that eating two eggs for breakfast is healthier than eating a bagel. Your local farmer's market should be teeming with pasture-raised eggs. Vegetables. Enjoy vegetables raw, steamed, baked or grilled. Even slothered in butter if you like. Cook up or slice up extra portions for easy preparation or snacking the following day. A list of the highest antioxidants vegetables. Make a special effort to include these regularly in your meals. Avocado, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, carrots, cauliflower, eggplant, garlic, kale, onions, red bell pepper, spinach, yellow squash. Nuts, seeds and their derivative butters. Nuts and seeds are the concentrated foods that represent an energy source, some call it a life force, for future generations of their plant packed with protein, fatty acids, enzymes, antioxidants, and abundant vitamin and minerals. You can conventionally carry and eat nuts and seeds anytime, anywhere, making them a favorite primal snack. Coconut products. Coconut is an excellent source of a special type of fat, medium chain fatty acids, that are difficult to find even in a healthy diet. Cooking and preparing recipes with coconut oil or other saturated fats like butter instead of poly unsaturated oils can be one of the healthiest dietary changes you can make. To get on the coconut bandwagon, grab a jar of coconut oil at a health food store or a finer market and use it for pan frying. Get some coconut milk and use it as a liquid base for smoothies and for replacing dairy milk. With cans, choose the full fat variety, not light. Fruits. The main problem I have with fruit consumption is the fruit calories can contributing to excessive total carbohydrate intake in the modern diet. Recognize that fruit is lipogenic, fat-forming carbohydrate source, so it should be consumed sensibly with that face in mind. The best approach is to try to emulate grok by eating fruits grown locally during their natural local ripening seasons. Organic fruits are 10 times richer in key micronutrients than the conventional counterparts. Organic fruits must manufacture high levels of antioxidants to defend themselves against pests. Something conventional fruits don't have to worry about thanks to their treatment with synthetic chemicals. All fruits offer a host of nutritional benefits, but some are relatively low in antioxidant values while having a high impact on your blood glucose and insulin production. In light of the popularity of juicing, it's important to note that whole fruits are vastly superior to juice even the most nutritious, freshly squeezed glass. Juice is generally high in sugar and lower in many of the other micronutrients than its produced sources because juicing eliminates the nutrient-rich skin and fiber that provides a more concentrated, less filling source of carbohydrates than the whole foods do. Pass on juice in favor of whole foods. Pass on juice in favor of whole foods. Enjoy local seasoned fruit and ditch grains, sugars, and bad oils. Mark's top 10 favorite foods. Blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, cranberries, and nearly all other berries. Avocados, cherries, apples, peaches, pears, figs, grapefruit, kiwis, apricots. Herbs and spices. A couple of headliners that are easily to integrate into your everyday meals include turmeric, often potent anti-inflammatory effects, and high antioxidant value. And cinnamon regulates blood sugar and demonstrates high antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant values. Moderation foods. Coffee. High-fat dairy products. Milk doesn't necessarily do a body good, at least not the usual store-bought kind. The coffee contains agents such as lactose, casein, hormones, pesticides, and antibiotics. Primal approved fats and oils. Animal fats, avocado oil, butter, coconut oil, dark roasted sesame oil, high omega-3 oils, macadamia nut oil, marine oils, olive oil, and palm oil. 
high nutrient value carbs. If you carry excess body fat and want to get rid of it, the most direct and reliable route is to dial back your average daily carb intake per the carbohydrate curve guidelines. When you ditch sugars and grains, you are well on your way to down-regulating sugar-burning genes and up-regulating fat-burning genes to achieve long-term satisfaction with your body composition without having to stress about calorie counting or obsessive exercise. Dropping excess body fat is pretty straightforward. Cut grains and sugars, moderate insulin, burn fat. Dark chocolate. Chapter 6, The Primal Blueprint Law, number 2, Avoid Poisonous Things. Topping the list of foods to avoid are sugar and sweetened beverages. Grains, yes, yes, even whole grains, and refined vegetable oils. Everything in moderation, including moderation. We struggle to stay healthy in the face of modern temptations and today's convenience-oriented food culture. Emphasis self-compassion when you pursue lifestyle change. Take the spirit of the 80% rule to heart and enjoy your pursuit of perfection without becoming too troubled by falling short of whatever lofty goals you envision. Say no without guilt. Say yes without fear. Going against the grain. Perhaps the most widely accepted health compromise is that grains are healthy, the staff of life, and as we've been led to believe our entire lives. While grains have indeed enjoyed massive global popularity for the last 7,000 years or so, they are simply not very healthy for human consumption. For better or for worse, we are no longer hunter-gatherers. However, our genetic makeup is still that of the Paleolithic hunter-gatherer, a species whose nutritional requirements are optimally adapted to wild meats, fruits and vegetables, not to cereal grains. There is a significant body of evidence that suggests that the human genetic makeup and physiology may not be fully adapted to high levels of cultivated grain consumption. We have wandered down a path towards absolute dependence upon cultivated grains, a path for which there is no return. The wise man sees in the misfortune of others what he should avoid. Grains offer the great majority of their calories in the form of carbohydrates, so they cause blood glucose levels to elevate quickly. Please realize that you are mismanaging your homo sapien genes by consuming high carbohydrate diet. All forms of carbohydrates are converted into glucose upon ingestion, and they stress the body's all-important insulin regulation mechanism accordingly. After consuming that bagel, scone, muffin, French toast, or bowl of cereal, all derived forms of grains, and a glass of juice full of sugar for your breakfast, your pancreas releases insulin into the bloodstream to help regulate blood levels. Take a look at the image of the healthy gut. You will see you've got floating around bacteria, pathogens, fatty acids, vitamin and minerals, glucose, and amino acids, and proteins. You've got the intestinal tract, then you have intestinal mucosal cells, then on the right side, healthy brushes. Down the bottom, the bloodstream. Now, looking at leaky gut, GI inflammation. You can see the intestinal mucosal cells being broken, full with bacteria and pathogens leaking everywhere. High insulin levels promote fat storage and disease. Moderate insulin levels, typical of the primal blueprint eating, stimulate fat burning and good health. It's that simple. The single most important requirement to improve your fat metabolism and succeed with long-term weight management is to reduce the total amount of insulin you produce. More die in the United States of too much food than of too little. More die in the United States of too much food than of too little. Sugar. The great dangers and damages caused by excessive sugar consumption are widely accepted and publicized these days. When it comes to dropping excess body fat, even conventional wisdom is admitting that dietary sugar, not dietary fat, is what is making us fat. Science also confirms that sugar and wheat, by the way, has addictive properties similar to those of hard drugs. Today we don't really need to fatten up for winter, but we still need to have some neurological reward pathway giving us pleasure for eating in sugary foods. The problem with a sugar-based diet is that glucose molecules are toxic in the bloodstream. Glucose molecules are toxic in the bloodstream. Industrial food is manufactured to be satisfying in the short term and addictive. Sweetened beverages are especially problematic because they have a lower satiety factor than solid foods, enabling the consumption of massive carbohydrate calories in a few big gulps, pun intended. 
40% of restaurant calories come from refined vegetable oil, since most meals are cooked in this sludge. Dr. Andrew Will writes that soybean oil alone is now so ubiquitous in the fast foods and processed foods that astonishing 20% of the calories in the American diet are estimated to come from this single source. Many experts believe there is a direct connection between consuming processed foods and obesity, beyond their direct contribution to caloric excess. Research also suggests that consumption of trans and partially hydrogenated fats is a direct instigator for inflammation, aging, and some cancers. Other foods to avoid, wheat, corn, rice, oats, barley, millet, rye, breakfast cereals, pastas, breads, pancakes, rolls, crackers, pastries, cupcakes, and the like. Processed foods. Anything with chemical additives or that's been heavily altered from its natural state requires little discussion. Realize that you have been bumbled with marketing messages your entire life that entice you to consume branded, boxed, edible, food-like substances. As food rules Michael Pollan likes to say, this has contributed directly and tragically to obesity, illness, and death in your family and community. Knowing what our ancestors didn't eat is perhaps more important to knowing what they did. Grok never touched refined sugar, refined high polyunsaturated vegetable oils, processed foods, or anything with hormones, pesticides, antibiotics, herbicides, fungicides, preservatives, or other chemicals. I might include grains and legumes on the list too. Chapter 7. The Primal Blueprint Exercise Laws. Move, lift, and sprint for functional full body fitness. Those who think they have not time for bodily exercises will sooner or later have to find time for illness. The Primal Fitness Blueprint. You can see down the bottom we have move frequently. More general daily movements avoid prolonged inactivity. Cardio workouts at 180 minus your age. Heart rate, cycle, hike, walk or jog, and water activities. Flexibility and mobility. Pilates, yoga, tai chi, gymnastics, dancing, dynamic rolling, stretching, or therapy work. Then in the middle we have lift heavy things. Brief intense resistant exercises. Two times per week for 10 to 30 minutes. And then up the top we have sprint. Several 8 to 20 second burst every 7 to 10 days when 100% energized. On the left you'll see play, spontaneous, outdoor, physical, fun, every day. And on the right we have recover. Sleep, relax, be intuitive, avoid chronic patterns, and I'll add one last thing, stretch. Reframe your perspective from more is better to brief and intense is better. Reframe your perspective from more is better to brief and intense is better. 80% of your body composition success is determined by how you eat, by how you eat. Reprogramming your genes through dietary modification is the best way to become fat adapted. When you moderate insulin production and upregulate your fat burning genes, you would tend towards your ideal body composition over time. Reducing excessive body fat is predominantly about hormone optimization through a low insulin production diet. The primal approach stands in sharp contrast to conventional wisdom's calories in, calories out model, where you hope the 600 calories burned during your 50 minute step aerobics class will somehow lead to weight loss. Instead of following a strict schedule, align your workout decisions with your energy and motivational levels. Today, the aging process should be really called the process of physical decline, largely due to inactivity and lifestyle habits that result in mismanaged genes. Walking is the best possible exercise. Habituate yourself to walk very far. Primal law number three, move frequently. Doing cardio workouts at 180 minus your age or below often requires a significant adjustment in mindset to reject the no pain, no gain mentality towards workouts. You should feel very comfortable at this heart rate and embrace the rhythm of workouts that are not strenuous or stressful. Primal blueprint law number four, lift heavy things. The idea is to challenge your body on a regular basis with brief intense workouts involving full body functional movements. Primal essential movements, four simple safe body weight resistance exercises, push-ups, pull-ups, squats, and planks. Remember that you are striving to achieve a good power to weight ratio and balanced functional total body strength. 
My own prescription for health is less paperwork and more running barefoot through the grass. Primal blueprint law number five, sprint once in a while. The only exercise some people get is jumping to conclusions, running down their friends, sidestepping responsibility, and pushing their luck. Chapter eight, primal blueprint lifestyle laws. Primal blueprint law number six, get plenty of sleep. Chronic sleep deficit may lead to weight gain by affecting how your body processes and stores carbohydrates and by altering hormones that affect your appetite and metabolism. Steps you can take to get optimum amounts of high quality sleep. Minimize artificial light and digital stimulation after dark. Create an ideal sleeping environment. Follow consistent bed and wake times. Wind down the night and ease into the day. Eat and drink the right stuff. Put the nap back on the map. Primal blueprint law number seven, play. We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. No one ever said, I'd wish I'd spent more time at work or on their deathbed. Ways to play include follow the leader, play a game, be a groupie, just go outside and move, unplug and take it up a notch. Primal blueprint law number eight, get plenty of sunlight. Exposing large skin surface areas to sunlight enables your body to manufacture vitamin D, which helps regulate growth in virtually every cell of our bodies and prevent a variety of diseases. There's been an alarming increase in health problems related to vitamin D deficiency. Primal blueprint law number nine, avoid stupid mistakes. Primal blueprint law number 10, use your brain. Modern life leaves our minds restless and underutilized because we are confined, inactive, and comfortable. Pursue new hobbies. Discipline your brain use. Exercise the muscle. Chapter 9, A Primal Approach to Weight Loss. Your health and likely your lifespan will be determined by the proportion of fat versus sugar you burn over a lifetime. These are critical elements to the Primal Blueprint Weight Loss Approach. Minimize carb intake. Target protein intake. Optimize fat intake. Deregulate meal habits and engage in occasional intermittent fasting. Exercise primarily, avoid excessive regimentation or obsessing on results. Remember that optimum health is the underlying goal of living primarily. LGN, looking good naked is just a pleasant side effect. Carbohydrate sweet spot for rapid fat loss is between 50 to 100 grams per day for most people. It's imperative to trust that the process of fat adaptation will work and not be adverse to liberal consumption of healthy dietary fats. Many would-be paleo converts make the mistake of cutting carbs per primal slash paleo guidelines, but also adverse to liberal fat intake should afford belief system ingrained by conventional wisdom that eating fat is fattening. Another common mistake dieters make is to cut carbs, moderate fat, and default into a high-protein diet. As we learned in Chapter 4, excessive protein is toxic to the body. Consuming more protein than is necessary to meet your basic metabolic needs results in the excess being converted into glucose via gluconeogenesis. If you don't burn that glucose right away, it gets converted into fat and stored. A high-protein diet may as well be called a high-carb diet when considering the effect it has on your fat reduction goals. The most often overlooked variable for successful fat reduction, sleeping habits. Weight loss macronutrient plan. The plan is as follows. Obtain a calculable level of protein sufficient to preserve lean muscle mass. Strictly limit carbs to an average of 50 to 100 grams per day and use fat as the main variable you adjust in order to obtain the satisfaction you need from your diet each day so that you aren't stressed or anxious about your weight loss journey. Have primal approved snacks available at all times. These include vegetables and certain fruits like fresh berries and nutritionist high fat foods like hard boiled eggs natural jerkies, nuts and seeds, olives, avocados, sardines, and high cacao dark chocolate. Your appetite will guide you effectively to meet your protein requirements, just as your thirst does for hydration requirements. The key is to virtually eliminate all forms of sugar, sweetened beverages, and grains from your diet. Accomplish this, and you can expect a steadily reduction in excessive body fat. Your body composition success is overwhelmingly determined on controlling your insulin output. Reject carbohydrate dependency caused by the standard American diet and reclaim your homeo sapiens genetic factory setting as a fat burning beast. Without insulin, eating fat will not make you fat. Without insulin, 
Eating fat will not make you fat. If you don't produce insulin, your body has no way to store the excess calories as body fat. The bottom line is that if you would not lose fat effectively with excessive driven weight loss efforts unless you moderate insulin production. The key to exercise and weight loss is to wisely balance periods of stress and rest. Balance periods of stress and rest. Moderating carb intake and insulin production is by far the most effective way to improve muscle definition and tone in, not only in your abdominal area, but everywhere else. It takes about three weeks of devoted dietary modification to downregulate sugar burning genes and upregulate fat burning genes. Eat plenty of eggs, meat, chicken, fish, nuts, and seeds, plus all the vegetables you want and fruits, with a little bit of restraint and selectivity. And stay away from grains, sugars, and processed foods. Your genetically ideal weight is where you are healthy, energetic, and comfortable. Chapter 10, nearly there, conclusion. We must admit that doctors, despite their extensive knowledge, training, and loyalty to the Hippocratic Oath, are focused on treatment rather than prevention. They're focused on treatment rather than prevention. The sad reality is that most of their business come from dealing with symptoms, not causes. Symptoms, not causes of easily preventable conditions. The fact that doctors receive little or no training in nutrition is nothing short of abysmal. Our government's laws, subsidies, and diet education efforts are steamingly driven more by lobbyists for the beef, grain, and dairy industries than by unbiased scientific evaluation and concern for human health. In the media, the historical checks and balances provided by honorable and unbiased investigative journalists have been de-emphasized and devalued by giant rating driven corporations. And that's a wrap on the new primal blueprint by Mark Sisson. Do yourself a favor, go out and buy the book. Check out our YouTube channel, bestbookbits.com for all the latest video book summaries uploaded daily. Check out our website, bestbookbits.com where you'll find the written summaries and downloadable PDFs in different categories such as biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, philosophy, psychology, really success, time management, and travel. If you're after audio podcasts, check out mixcloud.com forward slash best book bits, where you'll find the podcast version of the book summary. And also check out our Instagram page at best book bits for daily posts and motivational quotes. Thanks for watching and listening. Share if you like it, subscribe to the channel, and hope you have a great day and go out there and change your diet to be more primal.